Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn how to set up the database link from Oracle to DB2. This tutorial is done on Oracle 19C running on Linux 8. I got a local Oracle database called Aura 19D hosted on DB1. I got a remote DB2 database called test underscore DB2 hosted on DB2. Don't confuse this DB2 with this DB2. This is the host name. DB2 is the host name where this particular database is hosted. We will be creating DB link in Aura 19D pointing to DB2 database called test underscore DB2 or in other words, we'll connect to Aura 19D and access tables present in test DB2 database. So we will make a connection to this Oracle database called Aura 19D. The connection will be made here. And from this Oracle database, we will access the tables present in this DB2 database. So the DB link will be pointing from here to here. And from the Oracle database, we will access the tables present in the DB2 database. The, these are the high level steps on the source Oracle database. So wherever your Oracle database, in our case, it's host DB1. There are some steps as root, some as Oracle. So as root, install IBM DB2 ODBC CLI drivers, create CLI entry in DB2 CLI.ini file pointing to remote DB2 database. Once that is done, log in as Oracle, create init parameter file called init inst underscore db2.aura. This is your name. This basically is becomes the SID. This SID, you will register in listener.aura and you will create an entry in tnsnames.aura pointing to that SID. Once this is done, you are now ready to log into your database and create the DB link. Optionally, create the synonym. What are the steps at target DB2 database? On our host DB2, where your DB2 database is running? Nothing. You don't have to do anything. So everything that you will be doing is on the source Oracle database server. Let me repeat the steps for you. Install IBM DB2 ODBC CLI drivers create CLI entry, create init parameter file, register SID in listener.aura, create entry in tenancenames.aura. Once that is done, go ahead, create the DB link in Oracle database. Optionally, if you want, create synonym. Let's see these steps one by one. So this is the link where I have downloaded the ODBC driver. When I when I come to the lab, I will show you how I have, how I have downloaded it. So the the this is the this you will select for this particular package but actual package that will get downloaded will be this do not confuse it's the same package so basically we are downloading the 11.5.9 odbc cli driver now the reason why i have downloaded 11.5.9 is because my db2 version is 11.5.9 based on your db2 version you might want to download a different DB, ODBC CLI driver. Once you have downloaded this particular file, although I mentioned install, there is nothing to install. Actually, you just have to untar that particular file to a particular location. Let me repeat, there is nothing to install. You just have to untar that particular file to a particular location. Now, once you have untarred this particular file, remember that location, that location plays significant. Wherever we have untarred, that location plays significant because we are going to use that particular location. So here, this is the location where we have down, extracted that particular file. Under that, you'll create a file called db2cli.ini file. And this particular db2cli.ini file will tell the, will store the connection information. So this is your choice. Data source underscore DB2, whatever name you want to give, that's your choice. But however, these are some of the parameters that you will configure based on your remote database name. So DB2 is the database, is the host where the DB2 database is running. So this is the host name. This is the IBM DB2 port. This is the DB2 port. This is the protocol that we are going to access the DB2 database and the name of the database which we are going to access this is this is what we have so this entry is what we are going to create in db2 cli.ini file once this is done once install and the cli entry is done you are now ready to log into oracle so let next steps are as oracle so the first thing that we will do as oracle user is create the init parameter file where are we going to create the init parameter file under the oracle home hs admin oracle home hs admin will create the init and a parameter file and this is becomes whatever name you gave here it becomes your sid this sid is what we are going to use while registering the listener and while adding the entry in tns names.aura this particular name hsfds connect info this particular name should match this should match to the data source that you created in db2 cli.ini file and this the db2 cli ini path i told you remember this location where you extracted this particular file because this location plays significant role because you need to mention that in the init parameter file so this is the location and this is the lib db2 so driver that we will be using to access the db2 data source once you have created this 
this file remember this becomes your sid and this sid is what we are going to use in listener.aura here so you can see inst underscore db2 inst underscore db2 so this sid is what we are going to register in listener.aura using dg4 odbc oracle home once the static registration in the listener.aura is done go ahead and create a tns entry again we need to use the same sid here the same sid which we used here same sid which we used here same sid we need to use here but this can be anything this can be anything so here i have used tns underscore so this is the tns entry pointing to db2 database now once this all of these steps are done you are now ready to log into your database and create the db link so let's look at that so here i'm creating a database link called db2 underscore db link this is the user db2 user who has the access on that db2 database that you want to access this is the password of that particular user and this is the name of your tns entry this is the name of your tns entry once the database link is created you can now go ahead and access the tables present in your db2 database from the oracle database so here when i say select star from test at db2 db link what we are doing here is we are accessing this test table from this db link which is actually pointed to remote db2 database and we will be able to see the data so from the oracle database we can access the data of the db2 database optionally you can create a synonym so to create the synonym you will say create synonym the name of the synonym for the look the db2 table at the db link once this is done once you have created the synonym when you select start from the synonym you are actually retrieving the data from remote db2 database the table will be test now that we have seen everything let's go ahead and connect to our server and let's do the steps one by one Now, before we log into the server, there are some things that we need to do. The, the first two steps are installing the DB2 ODBC CLI drivers and creating CLI entry. To install this IBM DB2 ODBC CLI drivers, we need to have them. So we will be downloading them from the web. To do that, let's search for this particular keyword. Open the browser of your choice. Search for that particular keyword. You'll get this particular link. Open that particular link. Let's give it a minute. And once you open that particular link based on your version of db2 choose the version i'm going with 11.5 because that's the db2 database version that i'm using once you get that particular once you open that particular link you will be able to see here and as i mentioned the package that we will be downloading is ds clients odbc cli so here i'm choosing this last package ds clients this odbc cli select this say continue once you do that you will get this particular package this download this 11.5.9 so let's download that particular package give it a minute for that download to complete 36.8 mb let's wait for the download to finish once that particular package is downloaded we are going to transfer that particular package to the server so give it a minute and that should be done so that's done close the browser we don't need to browser anymore and what we are going to do we are then going to transfer that particular file to the server over the win scp so that's done no longer we need win scp so i'm going to close that so now let's go to the server so the first step we need to do th two things as a root so let's do that so let's extract that particular package as a root so, so to extract it i i should have that particular package so let's verify that i got that particular package And yes, I got that particular package. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to extract that particular package in this particular location using tar command, tar xf command. Let's do that. And that's done. Now let's go to that DB location. Under that, you will find the ODBC CLI that we just extracted. Let's open that particular, let's go into that particular path. Let's go to the C CD CLI driver and do ls minus L and we got this particular. So this becomes your odbc so let me clear this this becomes your this particular path becomes your cli driver path so this becomes your cli and this is what we are going to use in the init parameter file and this this is where we are going to create our first cli dot cli db2 cli dot ini file so let's create that particular file in this particular location and once what are, what are we going to say here in that particular file? The, these are the entries that I'm going to add and they are pretty simple. 
the host name that we are going to access, the port of DB2 database, the protocol and the name of that database. Our name is here actually test underscore DB2. So let me add that the database that we are accessing is test underscore DB2. Yeah, that's done. So now let's verify that particular file. And that's done. So we have created the DB2 CLI.ini. And where did we create that entry? Wherever we extracted that ODBC CLI driver in that particular file, in that particular location, we created this particular DB2 CLI.ini file. So that's good. So the first part is done. So now the work as root is actually done. So let's log in as Oracle user. So now whatever steps we will be doing as Oracle user. The what are the steps that we will be doing? So the two steps we have completed. So we have completed first and two, and now we will do three, four, five. Create init parameter file, register SID in listener.aura, create entry in TNSN. These are the three things that we will do as Oracle. And then finally, we'll log into the database and create the DB link. So let's do these three things. So the first thing that we will be doing is let's set the environmental variable because that makes my life easy, easier because it's set the Oracle home, etc. etc. Now, under the Oracle home HS admin, we'll create this init parameter file. So let's hit VI. Let me clear the screen and VI. So I'm creating the init parameter file that is currently empty. And here it's pretty simple. I'm only adding four to five lines. So what is this? Here, this is the name of the data source that we created in DB2 CLI. This is the location where we extracted that ODBC drivers. This is the lib from that ODBC driver. And these are some of the language parameters. So once we have created this particular file, let's save this particular file. Then this becomes, as I told you, this becomes your SID. This SID is what we are going to register in listener.aura. So let's do that. Let's add the entry for that SID. That's done. Let me verify that one more time. And here you can see program is DG4 ODBC. This is the SID. You can see that this is the init parameter file that we created. So this becomes your SID from the Oracle home. So we have done the static registration. Now, since we have done the changes in listener.aura, we have two choices. We can either start and store the listener or we can reload the listener. So before doing that, let's see the status. Only Aura 19D is registered. So let me, instead of stopping and starting, let me do the reload. That's done. Let's see the status. And you can see east underscore db2 is registered with our listener. I can do the grab also. So give me a minute. Let me do the grab. And we should be able to see that inst underscore db2 is service is now registered with listener. So that's the second part. And the final part is creating an entry in TNS names.aura. So let's do that. And what we are going to do, we are going to create an entry pointing to the SID, inst underscore SID. We are going to create and we are going to create this TNS entry. And this TNS entry is what we will be using while creating the DB link. Remember that. So our work as Oracle is done. Let's log into the database. And then what we are going to do, we are now going to create the DB link to the DB2 database. So let's take this all of these commands. I don't have to drop this. I don't have a synonym. So let's run this. So first command says create database link, name of the DB link, whatever name you want to give, that's your choice. This is the user, DB2 user who has the access on that DB2 database. This is the password of that particular user. And this is the TNS entry that we added in TNS name.aura. So let's go ahead and create this particular DB link. That's done. The DB link has been created. Now let's verify whether the DB link is working by selecting state. Looks like it is working. Let's verify using the let's see if we are able to access the data from this test table which is present in this db2 db link let's verify that let's select from that and yes we got this particular data now in real i would like to explain you this or i would like to inform you that this particular data is coming from this test table which is present in this db2 database now you may not believe me so what i'm going to do i will open another the session session to the db2 server so this is the db2 second server db2 server where my db2 database is running what i'm going to do i'm going to log in so the user that we used if you see the user that we used is db2 user so let me sudo su to that user because i'm as a root so let's do that sudo i can do su also but let's do sudo su 
that's done. Let me connect to that particular database. Test underscore DB2. That's the database. Let me connect to that database. I've connected. And now if I run DB2 select star from test, let's do that. We should get one record. One underscore one DB2 underscore DB. One db2 underscore db so that's the record but if you still don't believe me that what i'll do i will insert one record in the db2 database let me select from that particular db2 database just verify yes that looks good if you want to commit you can commit let me if you want to commit you can commit so let's let's do the commit and now if i go back to the oracle then the we should now we were having only one record. If it was really a DB2 table, we should get the second record. So let's verify that. And we can see the second record has appeared. Now, so that, that is the data is really coming from DB2 database. And we have access the data of the DB2 database from the Oracle database. Now, if you want to create the synonym, you can create the synonym using this particular syntax. This is the name of DB2 table. This is the DB link name. And when we create the synonym, when you access the data using the synonym, you are actually referring to the underlying base table. Let's create this synonym. That's done. And now if I select star from the synonym name, I should get the same record. So that synonym is also, also been set up. So this was the tutorial on how to set up the DB link from Oracle to DB2. The steps were we need to do some steps as root, install IBM DB2 ODBC CLI drivers and create CLI entry and some steps as Oracle, three steps basically create init parameter file, register SID in listener.ora, create entry in tnsname.ora. Once this is done, you are now ready to go ahead and create the DB link in your Oracle database. Optionally, create the synonym. And again, I would like to say thank you for watching. If you do like the videos that I'm uploading, if you do like the content that I'm uploading to my channel, do hit the like button, do hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Till then, bye-bye and enjoy your life. Thank you.